All right, so I'm going to start the recording. I'm going to share my screen with you. And I'm going to give you some basic background information on confidence intervals. So that's my number one objective for tonight. One of the things that I want you to understand is confidence intervals. Not whether there's three gener uh, generic or general uh, confidence level intervals that we use. So if we have a proportion, that means that we have counted data. It's counted information. It's discrete data, basically, is how we look at it. We're looking at a p hat plus or minus a critical z value times the square root of the p hat times the q hat over n. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in a question. So hang tight. If sigma is known, then we use a z confidence interval. So in calculators, it'll show as z interval. And the formula for that will basically be a mean plus or minus the critical z value times the sigma over square root of n. The third type, which we're not going to actually talk about today, I think today we only do the first two types. The third type is when sigma is unknown, sigma is unknown, and in this case we're using s of x as our standard deviation. And in this case, we use what's called a t interval. And there's a key to this one that I want to make sure you, you hear me out, just in case you run into it before I actually um, go over this concept. And this is basically uh, the mean value plus or minus the, key, the t uh, critical, which is basically the area and degree of freedom, and that is times s of x over square root of n. So right now, we're only focusing, I believe, on the first two because they're going to give us s of x, or sigma, lowercase sigma. OK, since we're only focusing on these two, I want to talk about the critical z values. So look at where I'm highlighting. OK, those are critical z values. You can actually look them up. And what you need to remember when we deal with this is that confidence intervals are always two tails. What does that mean? So what it means is, is that alpha, if you notice each of these alphas is split in half. Right? You notice that there in the bottom? So if I'm looking at, say, 90% confidence, the area which I look at, okay, so look at the diagram that I'm about to throw at you here. All right, so there's my, my chart. Here's 0.90 or the 90%. Notice that the 10% gets split in half. So this is really 0.05. And this is 0.05, all right, for a, do a total of 95. So 0.95 is the area that I'm going to look up when I do the z interval. OK, so what this means to me for 90% confidence, for example, if I go to Excel, which we would use the norm s inverse, let me pull it up so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so take a look here for just a second. And you'll notice that I'm gonna go with equals N-O-R-M-S inverse, because I have the area. I'm gonna put in 0.95. And that tells me that the critical Z value 
will always be 1.645 given an area of 95. So if you notice, if I shrink, shrink this, my Z value equivalent is what I use for 90% confidence, okay? The next very um, common uh, confidence interval is 95%, which obviously 5% split in half is 0 0.025. So here, I'm going to look up equals norm S inverse again. But this time, I'm going to put in 0 0.975 which means that this Z equivalent is about 1.96 and that does not change. So once you know that, that will always be the value that you're gonna use as your critical Z. So remember, this is Z critical. What we mean by Z critical is that it is the cutoff of our confidence interval. If I do the same thing for the 99%, which is the other commonly used uh, confidence interval, again, for this, the 1% gets split in half and added to the, to the, to the main area. So that's 0.995. So that becomes equals norm S inverse of 0 0.995. And you get a z-score, as you can see, of uh, 2.76. Obviously, you want to maybe shrink this in. Oops, too far. And that's your z-critical. So please, take a picture of these or write them down. That will never change. That will be what you will use every time for that critical value. And again, what did I say about confidence intervals? I said that they are always two-tailed. That's why we split the tail in half. So if you notice, this 90% means that 10% of alpha is remaining, which I'm gonna split in half, leaving me 0.05 for the left and the right. Here, I have 5%, which I'm gonna split in half, leaving me 0.025. And for this one, I have 1%, which I'm gonna split in half, leaving me as a decimal equivalent 0 0.005. So that's how I'm getting uh, the tail. So if this is 0 0.005, the center value holds 99% or 0.99 equivalent. Above it is another 0 0.005. So when you add all that up, you should get one for an answer, okay? And that's why when I did this, I'm just gonna write it down so you have it. I did norm S inverse, and I'm putting in 0.995 because I'm in essence adding up these two numbers. Okay, any questions so far? Or is that making sense? So far so good? Yeah. Okay, so please remember these, write them down and we'll go from here once you have them written down. I'm gonna go ahead and move forward with this. Take a picture if you have to, to make it quick. I'm understanding this, that we're ready to move on so I can go into Alex and we'll do a question together. Yes. Okay, the yes. other thing I need you to really take home is the formulas. Please take a picture of this if you have to, or write it down, because you'll need this as we move forward with the questions. Yeah, um, critical Z value, that, that's a Z, and then what is that before the two? That's the alpha that remains split in half. So if you remember when I did, for example, 90% confidence, I said to you, well, there's 10% alpha, right? Alpha is 10%. In other words, one minus the 90, but it gets split in half. Remember I said that? So that means that this right. is 5%, 5%. So I, I reduced it to a decimal of 0.05. So you have, if I were to draw it out, the 90 is sitting right in the middle. Here's 90%, right? And up here you have 5%. And over here you have 5%. So it's always two-tailed with a confidence interval. Never changes. What is that symbol there after the Z? 
Alpha? Alpha. This one right here? Yeah, it looks like a four with a circle to the side of it. Yes. No, oh, that's I'm saying alpha. it's alpha divided by it's two. Alpha divided by two. That makes more. Yep. Yeah. All right. Jeez. Making Thank you. Of the teacher. Jeez. <laughs> It's a rough you. crowd, rough crowd. So yes, it's alpha divided by two. Hi, Miss Marie. Hello. I made it. <laughs> Good. So Z alpha divided by two. So yeah, if, if there's anything else that uh, you're not following, let me know. All right. So you got the formulas. You got the critical values that I showed you. Um, and now let's look at a question or two. Hopefully by the end of today, you will have everything completed. That's the goal, okay? So, all right, over here, I just want to restate again, I sound like a, like a parrot. Jeannie, that wasn't directed at you. I know you have parrots. Uh, <laughs> this is intended just to reinforce the fact that confidence intervals are always two-tailed, always. So you always take that alpha and slice it in half. Okay, this is alpha. Looks like a weird, look like a fish, I guess. If you're a kindergartner drawing a fish, that's what your fish would look like. That's alpha. So whatever alpha is, in other words, whatever the area is, if you notice, my area becomes 0.95. Once again, I cannot stress enough. If you look right here, there's your 90%. All right, here's out the first half of the alpha. Here's the second half of the alpha. But when I look up the critical Z, which is this funny looking symbol that I drew here that someone <clears throat> was making mockery of me, um, that's what it looks like. And it's basically this area is 0.95 for this example. And I showed you on the, on the previous uh, slide with uh, Excel, these three values, which are crucial for you to know because they're not gonna change. They're not gonna change. Even when we get into hypothesis testing, that's not gonna change in the two tail. Okie dokie. I'm moving on from here. Are we good? Not good? Thumbs up if you're getting it. Just give me a thumbs up on your screen. I can see everybody. Okay. Okay, so what is the issue? If I don't have a thumbs up, what is your issue? Okay, I'm looking, I'm looking at this, and this is this is my um. This is my um, Excel table, am I right? I'm on Excel, correct. Okay. So what I need you to do is to, at this point, write mm -hmm. down what you see here. So if they ever ask you for a 90% confidence level, or mm -hmm. confidence interval with 90%, that critical Z is gonna be 1.645, and it never changes. Okay, that's, that's 90%, right? 90% confidence. Okay. And confidence interval. If instead the confidence interval is 95%, mm -hmm. we are going to focus here as Z critical at 1.96. That's never going to change. Okay, 1.96. I got okay. that. And I have a confidence interval. What is that pen? That is so weird. Confidence interval, 95%. Right. If the confidence interval is 99%, so that means it's it's very narrow. If I'm 99%, well, actually, it depends. It depends on the sample size. That means that I'm only leaving a very small margin of error. In that case, my Z critical is 2.576, never changes. This is critical. Wait a minute. Oh, this is 
This is norm. Normous norm inverse. Normous I, I, inverse, I, I, but don't confuse apples and oranges. When I did normous inverse, and you'll see that when you when you revisit the video. Remember how I said to you in the previous example with 90% confidence? Mm -hmm. You remember how I said to you the 90% is in here. If I take the alpha and I split it in half, which in our case is 0.10 divided by two, in that case, you notice I have 0.05 on the right and 0.05 on the left. Add by two. Okay, and what that means for us. What about 10, about two, point oh five. What that means for us is that if I go into Excel, okay, notice that I'm gonna go equals N-O-R-M-S. So I mm -hmm. want this one, I want this guy, norm S inverse. Okay. And notice how it's asking you for probability so I'm going to put in, in this case, 0.95. Because I'm adding that middle chunk in the first chunk. Hence 0.90 plus 0.05, which is 0.95. Okay. Do you have to put another uh, parenthesis around the 95? You would. Okay. Sorry, I'm taking attendance real quick while I'm talking. Thank you All for right. waiting for me. And the so, 95 now, comes from the 90 point and the 0 0.05, correct? Correct. You're adding the two chunks. Okay. Now, uh, once you do that, notice our value again. Like I said, this will never change. Check it out. You see how you get 1.644854? Mm -hmm. But round it to three decimals you're back to exactly what I stated up here, which is 1.645. Mm -hmm. So I've already done the work for you in terms of that, but that's how you, you obtain it. So if you notice for the 1.96, if I do the 95%, just to restate the obvious here, I'm gonna take that 0 0.05, which is 5%, right? 100 minus 95 is 5%, mm -hmm. which if converted to a decimal is 0 0.05, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Divided in half, that means that this is 0 0.025 on the right, 0 0.025 on the left, and in the center, 0 0.95. So now when I look at the normal distribution, I'm adding those two together, which come to 0 0.975. That's never going to change. So once you know it, you know it. Now, equals N O R M S inverse. I don't think so. And we're going to put in 0 0.975. All right, are you with so far, everybody? Is there any other questions that are coming to your mind? Mm -mm. Okay, and when I hit that, you see how we have 1.959964, which obviously mm -hmm. I want to mm -hmm. shrink to 1.96, which again, look up here. I already did that for you. Yep. That's the critical. Uh -huh. All right, I think I heard everybody. All right, so that's good. All right, so going into, let's go into the first section in Alex and let's talk about the questions one by one. Let's be patient with each other. Everybody's gonna be in a different place, uh, knowledge-wise, knowledge so be, pat be patient. And we'll, we'll get everybody's homework done together. How's that? Sounds like a plan. Don't all talk at once, right? Yep. All right, here we go. We're gonna do first the confidence interval for the population mean. And um, let's see what they're giving us. So remember, 
we're looking for them to give us the standard deviation of the population. Remember I said that at the beginning, because that makes a difference whether it's a Z test or a T test. Okay. Shell. All right. So what else do we notice? The standard deviation of 106. Standard yeah, deviation is equal to 106. Right. Okay. And what else do we know? Uh, sample of 90. Sample size of 90. So that that is all we need. We have everything we need to um, do the math this, here. And this is the second formula that you wrote down? That's the second we're formula. Because the first one was proportion. So the well, second that's, next. The mean. that's coming up next. Oh, okay. Okay. So let me let me just also remind you here. Notice that it says carry your intermediate computations to at least three decimal places and then round your final answer. This is a key. Round your answer to one decimal. Okay. So um, let's do this together. I'm going to work it out with you. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. so let's go to our formula sheet here. So I said, this is gonna require the mean plus awesome. or minus the critical Z value. Notice that's a critical Z value times that standard deviation over square root of N. Now notice that they did tell us that this is a population standard deviation. So again, we have the mean we know is 1800. The confidence level that we're looking at is 95%. What is the critical value? Is it the, it's not the 106, is it? 1.96. 1.96? Yeah, so that's the critical Z. Okay, wait a minute. We have, Oops. Equals the standard deviation, you told us that was 106, and we have N, which is equal to 90. Z equals 1.96. Is that 2 over 2? That's alpha over 2. Alpha over 2. Oh, alpha. Alpha. Yes. Okay. So... Now we have 1,800. I see you laughing, Ryan. I got you. I got your number. Okay, I'm kidding. Um, 1,800 plus or minus the critical value, which is 1.96 times the standard deviation, which is 106 over the square root of 90. So I'll color code everything for you. Follow me to America. You'll see the connection. Look at the formula. Over square root of 90. If you follow the color code, if worst case, that'll help you since apparently my writing is not of uh, not up to par. Is the square root of 90 um, 45? No, you have to use the square root form formula. Okay. And so I'll just circle this part here. Uh, the, where is that? That's right here. All right. Are we good so far? Are we able to, follow, to get able to follow the color code? Yeah. Yes, we're good. Okay, wonderful. Yes, take a picture of this, of worst case, or write it down, your choice. Okay, now, the calculation here. I believe that you have a calculator. Can I get mm -hmm. one volunteer like Jeannie or somebody who I know can do this already, has done this already to do the calculator and show it on the screen? Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, that'd be awesome. All right, let me I, make a co-host. Host to host the most. All right. I have to get, I have to get in my Alex and, and get the... the you, yeah, you just need your calculator. And you wrote down all the numbers, I hope. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Hang on one second, let me get in my Alex. Make sure you have this written down because this is a good start. 
to this question and then we can do some more and you'll you'll feel like a pro by the time we're done hopefully that's our goal hang on one sec. can i just get the calculator or can i it because it's taking me to um old stuff let's say i'm not um, sure all right, let me share my screen. Hang on. Awesome. Can I click on that? Start knowledge check. Will that take me to something or? No, you need the calculator. Yeah. So don't do that. Don't start the knowledge check. Yeah. Um, all right, let me go to uh, assignments. Um, oh, that's how we get that. Yeah. Oh, that's how we get I, that. I, owe Claire, I owe something for class four, so I'll just go in the calculator for class okay. four. That's fine. All right, so 1800? 1800. Plus or minus? Plus or minus. 1.96. Um, 1.96. Times? 106. Times. 106 six. divided by? Divided by the square root of 90. So put square root of 90. And look at this beautiful calculator. Hit equal. And there's your answer. So if you recall, in this question, they wanted one decimal place. So this would be 778.1. <laughs> Because remember, a, they only want one decimal place. Equals 1,821. 1,821. 1, but that's for this example. I have a point question 21. about the calculator. So I have a TI-83 plus. Oh, let I'm me show you that one. Yeah, let me show you okay. what that looks like. You're going to love this. So let me... Steal my screen back. All right, and so let me go to the calculator itself. So if you happen to have this calculator, this is the time to whip it out because this is when we really need to, to save ourselves. Look at how easy this is gonna be with the calculator. So in your calculator, do you know where the stat key is? I assume yes. Go to stat and go over to test. Stat pilot. Okay. okay, if you go all the way down, you see how this is the interval? Yeah. Hit enter. Obviously, you want stats. Okay. In the standard deviation, we had 106, so you'll put 106. The mean that's given to us is 1800. The sample size is 90, and we want 95% confidence, so just leave it at 95. And go ahead and hit calculate. calculate. Hit calculate, and look at your answer. That's ridiculous, okay. So it makes your life very easy. Now you see the formula, you see the calculator, and you see how you can actually do this as well. You can actually do it on a regular calculator, as we just showed. A little you. different. I have the TI eighty four plus, and it gives me a different list of what you had. Okay, what is yours here? Yours is not online, right? It says uh, the standard deviation, and then it says a list, and then it says frequency or no. That's because you're in the wrong tab. So uh, let me go back. I want you to notice something. Do you, do you see this? Yeah. You see this? Yeah. So you need to be here. Oh, on the stats. And then yes. click enter at stats. Hit enter. Hit enter. Okay, stats. Okay, mm -hmm. I got it now. Yeah, go ahead. I'll give you a second. Go ahead and, and go put in your data. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let me know this what is, you get stuck on. This is wrong. 
Man, while wild. people are doing that, is there not? I like I like this method, but is there not a uh, plus minus button like you would, it had on the online? Calculator? You don't need it. You don't need it. Right. Go ahead. Uh, so you'll see what I'm saying. Um, it, it'll automatically. Once you're ready, let me know. Oh. Oh, I was able to find it. Yeah, I did I it on the calculator. It. How you showed? Yeah. It does it right away. Yeah, Great. I got it. And we go all the way down. Mm -hmm. I hit enter. Mm -hmm. Are we good? Yeah, thank you. I'm going to go over to calculator. OK, so where are you? You're going to go to stat? I'm trying to. I got okay. stat. OK, go over with the arrow key to test. Oh, OK. I got it. Now scroll down with the to arrow Z key interval. to Z interval number seven. Hit enter. enter. And then make sure that you're on stats. I got it. Okay, excellent. Okay. Now put in your numbers. Now we got to go over to stats. Yes. Okay, I got, now go down. You got your numbers though? You got to put your numbers wait, in. Wait a minute. Okay. And wait a minute. Mine say L1, list. Okay, you need to move over to that's, stats. Yeah, that should be data. You're in data right now. That's why it's telling you L1. See how this okay. is data? Okay. That's the stats. I want yeah. the stats. So I got it. it. Okay. I got it. The 106. And then we go down. Uh, yeah, with the little arrow key, go down 1800. 1800. Go down again. Sample size 90. Okay. Go down again. And then put in 0.95. I need you to edit this video. I have a little blurb, but I need, I need to edit it. Okay, I got 90. 95 uh, for the confidence level. Thank you for the call. And, 90, and 95 and go down to uh, calculate. Calculate, yeah. And hit enter. Mm-hmm. One point, I mean, 1778.1. Look at you. 1821.9. Look at you. Is that right? Yeah. Oh my God. Now, don't, that may not <laughs> be your answer for your question. I hate to say that, but what I need you to do now is let's look at another question. Let's see if, um, you know, it's uh, similar to this. So I would put in my answers into the lower and upper. Remember your lower numbers are always gonna be the smaller of the numbers you get. The upper will always be the higher of the numbers you get. So that's where you do there. All right, let's, shall we do another? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, yes. let me, let me, let me uh, I don't know what's going on here. Hang on a second, I think I just lost it. Here we go, here we go. I'm telling you, by the time you leave with this class, you're gonna be in great shape. All right, here we go. All right, so let's do another question just like that. And again, remember you're doing the questions involving means. Okay, so when you look at this question, most of you get a little nervous, right? Because you see that E, M, E, Q over L. Oh my God, it's a bunch of nonsense what it is. You don't even pay attention to it. You're not Tell sharing. Me, I'm not. No, ma'am. I don't want to share anymore. You're being people and being mean to me. They tell me my alpha over two looks like a four. All right, just kidding. All right. Um, tell me, what is the sample size? Is it? What is the 100? sample? 100. 100. Okay. What's the average? Where do you see the word mean or average? I'm trying to say. One. It's 101. 101. 101. Yep. So our sample size is 100. We know the mean is 101. What's my standard deviation? 36. 36. 36. And what confidence level do we need? 95%. 95%. 95%. What does that mean to you in terms of that critical? 96. 
It is that Z is equal to 1.96. Very good. All right, let's go. Show me what you got. So Use got whatever screen. method you want, or if you want, I'll throw it into the to the formula. We can do that. I have the answer. Go ahead, Janie. Uh, it's 100.9 and 101.1. .1. Okay, let's see if she's right. Everybody, let's prove her to be right. Okay, so we our, that. Yeah, our formula is 101 plus or minus the 1.96 times the 36 divided by square root of 100. That's what your formula should look like. So check yourself, get used to writing it out. I don't care if you're using technology because it helps you to do that. All of this, by the way, just for the record, um, all of what I'm about to highlight here in yellow, all of this is your margin of error. Okay, and I'm gonna explain that real quick, what that means to me, you, you and to me. So I'm gonna throw this into the calculator and you guys are going to do this on your calculators, whatever whatever method you're using. I got stats. Okay. Guess 36. Okay. Go to test. Are you in test? I got, I'm, I'm at stats. Okay. I got 36. Oh, no, no, no. Stop for a second. Stop and listen to what I'm asking you. Go ahead. Go, go, go to stat and go to test on the top. Okay. Scroll down to Z interval. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go back up. Stat. Enter. And then go over to test. It ain't you, acting right. Okay. You need to Wait go a back. Minute. Wait a minute. Stats. Mm -hmm. And go over to test. Go over to test. Uh huh. I did. Come down to Z interval. Okay. Hit, it, hit enter. And it should look like this right now. Enter. The stat should be the one blinking. Yes, ma'am. I have it. All right. So the standard deviation is 36. The mean is 101. The sample size is 100. Confidence level, no change, right? And you want to go down to calculate. Enter. Enter. What'd you get? I got something well, different. Not one, 1. 1.96 is not the confidence level? 93.944 and 108.06. Yeah, that's what I got. So let me see what yeah, I put the I put the 1.96 in at the confidence level. We don't have to do that. I don't know what calculator you use. Use the same one you are. And X. Okay. So you don't X have is to. And, and, and uh, have to. sample mean is 100. Okay. So look at my numbers. Yeah, I got it. All right. So when you recalculated that, what did you get? Did it change? 0.95 or just 95? Um, I just says, should just say, you know, I forgot what it looks like. Uh, hang on a second. Let me just pull it up. Yeah, 0.95. I'm getting 90. I'm getting 93.9. That's correct. Um, if you look up. Oh, oh, I got that. Okay, 108.06. 108.06. And that's your um, confidence interval. That's your upper and lower. Okay. So, all right, good. I'm glad you're getting confident. I don't know. <sighs> all right, that's good. That's good. Is the confidence interval for the upper and lower going to be the same number? Can you feed them when you're done eating? Because Hold on a second. Hold on. I have to mute. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't have people having conversations and something I'm recording and I'm going to share. Um, okay, so 
Can you ever have the same confidence, um, lower and upper confidence? If you your data is perfect and you have no deviation, yes. What you have to remember, if you can hear me clearly, um, uh, so let's go back here and this one. So this is 93.944 and this is 108.06. Now, there's a couple of things I wanna explain using this example. Do um, you notice how in this one, our standard deviation is 36? Do you remember the standard deviation means that that is how far the scores and average are going away from the mean? Does that make sense to you what I just said? Yeah. So it's an error, right? Yeah. 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 What happens if I reduce that error? Just let me play, let me play with my calculator. I'm just gonna play with your. You got these numbers written down. That's with a standard deviation of 36. So if I go to stat, I go to test. I'm gonna go to that Z interval and guess what I'm gonna do here? I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna reduce that. Let's make it a 10, one zero. I just took 36 as a standard deviation. I said, forget that. What if, what if it's a smaller sense of error? Look at what happens. What happened to the interval? Increased. It decreased, it's much more narrow. Why is it more narrow? Because there is less. There's, there's the, less, yeah, the interval. The deviation, I guess, lower. when you draw like the, the chart, like you, you do, I forget what the chart is called, but the, the lollipop. Yeah, the lollipop. The, from the mean, it was 36. Those uh, numbers were spread out a lot more. And then that's why it's closer that it right. shrunk in each, each point is. I shrunk it down to 10. That's the difference of 26 error points, right? So look at what happens if I instead go the opposite route. I don't know if you noticed that deviation was less than two points away from each other, right? Did you notice that? That was like 99 and 102. Let's make the deviation larger. Let's increase the deviation to 60 from 36 to 60. Look what's going to happen. Now, everything else is the same. Whew. Much wider, right? So the standard deviation is toying with you in the background. It's saying that the degree of separation between the average and each extreme, which is the margin of error. Listen to the language, margin of error. What is the standard deviation? It's a measure of error in a sense. The bigger the standard deviation, the wider the interval. Everything else the same, of course, because you have more error, more mistakes. Um, I can give you a real life example of this so that'll make maybe connect for you a little bit harder. You know, I've taught classes where everybody was about the same academic ability, same age group, same academic ability, same, same standardized scores. I've taught classes where the students might have had the same ages, but oh my God, it's a spectrum. I had from you know, borderline failure to super academic. What do you think that would do to my grades? Chances are my grades will be much more spread out, right? Because I'm gonna have those failing and those passing with flying colors, as opposed to other classes where my students are more consistent and the separation of their grades might be less evident. As right now, where I'm teaching um, in one of the colleges that I'm teaching, I have gifted students. The separation of their grades is minimal. My standard deviations are like maybe 4%. That's nothing. I mean, I have 100% students. And then the worst case scenario, 88%. They're very close to that average of 90 something. Make sense? 
Yeah, so as when you're drawing my... that bell in that class where there's a lot of people with a similar grade, it's going to be pushed in, shrunken in towards Correct. the middle, right? Okay. Well, actually, it'll be uh, left skew, left skew, because it'll be higher end. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah okay. If I was looking at the Olympic runners uh, and their speeds, Olympic runners and their speeds better be right skewed, right? Because I want a crunch in the lower end and really narrow. Because at that point, you're splitting hairs for who's number one, right? Does that make sense? And to, uh, theoretically? All right. Yeah. So that's kind of what a confidence interval is. And I've also used the shopping example. Have you ever shopped for something that you're not familiar with? Like, for example, I used to be a heavy gamer. I don't know if any of you are into video games. Oh, yeah. I, I used to love playing video games like Zelda. Zelda, oh my God, I had all the series and I was obsessed with killing Ganondorf. Okay, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I know, I know. I, I, I'm a big kid. Um, but there are other games. And so when you look at the X, there's, what was it, the Xbox, then it was a something else box. And now it's the, I don't know what, Rocket Launcher box. I don't know. They, they've changed. They've upgraded. So if I was to go shopping for a video game box now, first of all, I'd be embarrassed because of my age. But second of all, um, I wouldn't know how much to pay for that, right? So I, I would ask, hey, how much did you pay? Hey, how much did you pay? Chances are I get a very wide range depending on the, what I was looking for. Something newer, chances are I'm going to get the price right on the mark because there's no deviation. This is coming out. This is going to cost you, you know, $500, period. Make sense? What I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. So that's how kind of like the, the mindset you should, you should have. All right. Um, how, how, how are you feeling? How did, well, I don't understand. You got the, I, I saw how we got the 93.944, but I don't understand how you got the 108.06. Okay. That's what I wanted to explain. So let's talk. So on this question, I'm glad, glad you brought me back to earth. Um, this being the average right here, all right, am I sharing my screen? No. No. Okay. I had a feeling. All right, here we go. All right, so this being the average, 101. Okay, let's take 93.944 and let's add 108.060. Add those two together. Somebody give me a number. What do you get when you add those two? Two oh two one nine point zero zero four. Two oh two point zero zero four. Let's take this number now and let's divide this number in half. What do you get? 101002. Look familiar? Okay, so now you know that. If we take the 108.06 and let's subtract from it the 101, what are you left with? Seven point oh six. Seven point oh six. Okay, now watch, watch the magic. Let's take the other end. Let's take 101 and let's take away 93.944. What are you left with there? 7.056. Which you round to 0 0.06. So in other words, the margin of error is literally the center point or the distance from the center point. So here's your lower confidence level. Here's your co upper confidence level. Here's your average right in the middle. This is the 101. Again, this was 108.06. This was 93.944. Again, the distance from here to here was 7.06. 
Hence, that is your margin of error. The distance from these two, that's 7.06. Again, that is your margin of error. So the margin of error is always the same distance from the average on both sides. Okay. Um, it is the result of the 1.96 times the square root, which was 36, divided by square root of n, uh, which was 100 in our case, right? Take let's take the math, let's do the math for this part. So if you take the 36 and let's divide it by the square root of of, 10, of 100, which is basically 10. So you're basically dividing 3.6 now, or multiplying 3.6 times 1.96, which is approximately 7.06. If you round it out to three to, to, to decimals. So it's the mean, if you recall, we'll go back to the formula. It's the mean plus or minus that. Hence what we just did here, the mean plus or minus that number. Is that making sense? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's where that's why the numbers are where they are. Okay. Talk to me. I just don't know how you I, I, I really get it. I just don't know how you came up with that 108.060 so quickly. You had it before, you had calculated it previously and gotten it, or you, you actually added 14 point no, I to in your head. And, no, I literally used a calculator. So if I, Ms. I, 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 Ms. I, I totally Marie, let me that. ask a question, please. Go ahead. I have with mine, I got 7.056. Is it the same? Right, we're rounding it to six. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's where if, if so you the notice, five becomes a six. Yeah, you round it. So if you notice, I did uh, um, just use the calculator there. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't, let's say hypothetically, I didn't even have that information, I would have known if I if I had the margin of error, I just would have done a 101 minus, uh, minus this, the 93.944. And the dif difference between them would mean that I would add 7.06 to get 108.06. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. All right, is there anybody who ha has a learning gap at this point that wants to talk to me real quick about this as we move forward? Tell me. Um, I could not find out how to take and do the homework, but I did take and do the test and I got six out of 10, which I was proud of myself, but I don't know how to get to the homework. Um, the homework is, when you open up Alex, the homework is uh, right on your uh, screen. I'll walk you through that after the session. Thank you. Um, I may have questions later because I couldn't use a calculator every time I tried to. I couldn't hear you. So if I try to open up another window. We, so we are going to do another one. Are you I'll ready for another one? That. Yes. Let's, let's try you, another one. Yeah. yeah. Can you do another one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, apparently I have to go into Alex every time because you know it misses me so. Uh, here we go. I think this is a new one. There you go. All right, tell me what is the mean? What is the standard deviation? What is the point? The mean is forty three point four hours. Ninety five percent. We want ninety five percent again. And that means and the sample what? is 80. 1.96. The Z score is equal to 1.96. Very good. What's the standard deviation? Nine. Nine. And what's the sample size? 80. 80. All right. All right. Uh, you want me to do this on the formula or do you want me to wait for you? Standard deviation is 80. Then no. no look at, that's look the at sample. The first, okay. Look at the look at the first sentence and look at for standard deviation. Nine hours. Nine hours. All right. So I hope I'm showing my screen. Yeah. Yeah, so I see again, it. Again, our formula, the Z score. 
the mean plus or minus that critical Z score, which we already know is 1.86 because mm -hmm. we were there. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is over sigma over square root of N. Our mean, unless you're lying to me, you told me it was 43.4 plus or minus that 1.96 because nothing has changed. It's 95%, nothing will change times nine over square root of 80. You want me to color code it? Will it help you? So there, there's the sample size where n is um, n is equal to 80. Uh, let's color code uh, sigma in orange. That's nine. That's our standard deviation. So standard deviation is equal to nine. Write it down if you have to. It might help you to follow along. Uh, the mean is 43.4. Okay. And our critical Z, let's do critical Z in yellow. I think that's what I used last time. So critical Z, which we already studied and we know is 1.96. Mm -hmm. So if you follow a regular calculator, I'll tell you what, I'm, in, I'm even gonna do this with a regular calculator for you. So take a look up on the screen. I'm going to use just the calculator portion of this. Notice a nice blank, clean screen. Now, those of you that have the plus minus symbol, I don't have that. So I have to literally do this plus and minus separately. So this might be a good example to get you to see. So this is the first part, part for me. It's going to be 43.4 minus... Notice that I'm going to do parentheses 1.96 times, again, parentheses, because I've got a fraction I've got to deal with. I'm going to do 9 divided by, I need that square root symbol, so second square root of, what's our number, 80. Okay, and I have to bump it over a little bit, put the parentheses. That's my, that's my minus, that's my low lower confidence level. Okay, so you have that on video. You can always go back 43. and see that. 43. What, you need it like 43. that for a minute? Minus parentheses, 1.96 times parentheses, nine divided by Second square root hmm? of 80. Yep. Okay, when you hit enter, you have, that should be your first value. So I got 41.427, so 41.4. I'm assuming it was. That's what I got. Yeah, cool. Now look at the next line I have. Because remember, I don't have that fancy calculator you all have. Notice that nothing changes except for the minus becomes a plus. So I'm just doing this the hard way just to show you that you can do this without the technology. So second square root, again, this should be 80. Bump it out a little bit, put a parentheses twice. Okay, that's what your upper confidence looks like in the calculator. Okay, I'm gonna hit enter. So my confidence interval, when I do this, the easy way, and you all do it with your fancy calculator, fancy Alex calculator, you'll see that we have the same answer. Do you see that? Are you able to follow that? Is that easy? I'm able to <clears throat> get the, the lower confidence level, but without subtracting 41.4 from 43.4 to get, to get the 1.97. And then add it to get the 45. But and I was able to do that, but like using that stat thing, can you get the upper confidence level or does that only give you the lower? Okay. So you when it's subtraction, this will be the lower confidence. When it's addition, correct. it'll be the upper confidence. Yeah, oh, correct. You get both you get both values after doing that um, stat calculator on the yeah, the tests and the Z interval. So you get, if you, I, 
If you notice, Ryan, if I subtract uh, 43.4 from 45.3, technically, I already have the margin of error. So I just have to take that number and subtract it. Take 43.4 and subtract that from that number. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting that. <clears throat> I'm, oh, you know what? When it shows the answer on the stat thing, it says the 41.428. I didn't notice it was a comma and then the 45.372. I thought it was just one whole number that it was giving. Oh. Oh. All right. So here's my. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna go fancy pants on you here. Um, sample size of 80. 95 percent. They're they're leaving us there. Look at that. It's the same answer we just got. Mm -hmm. Just round the the decimal. Yeah. The All difference. Right. Yep. All right. So talk to me, people. How are we on this? Are some of you trying your homework as we speak? Better. You can say it's better. I'm getting better? I'm going to get better. Yeah. Once I go in to find out how to do the homework. <laughs> I usually um, take and go into the uh, modules and um, do it. But now you'll show me how to get to the homework so I can take and do it all. You see my mug? It's through the modules. It's and my dog the doesn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. All right. Valerie, how are you doing? You're not talking to me. You're good. Kathleen, you're so quiet today. She's not talking to me either. I'm good. <laughs> All right. Don, and you're good. Christopher, I'm good. Beatrice, Chad, Bye. Nicholas, Michelle, y'all oh, talk to me if you need me. I'm right. good. I'm Tell good. I, I just, I, I can't show my face right now. Too much in the background, but I'm definitely following you and I'm, I'm cool. Hey, I'm Michelle. I'm hey, here, how are you, Ronnie? I'm good. Good, good. But my only issue now. is that this isn't coming up in Alex for me, this homework. It's like slope of the line and Y intercept and all the stuff that I have to do that I am not. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to maybe take you back, but don't leave me at the end of the class and I'll walk you personally. Everybody will get um, just to, to share your screen with me and we'll figure it out. Well, yeah, because that's, I, I that's my that. only challenge is I'm not seeing this as homework for me. <clears throat> it's just slope so, of the line, Y intercept and things like that. Yeah. I'm like, okay, okay, I I can, Ryan has something to share. But I, maybe help yeah, that, <clears throat> that happened to me last week's homework. And again, this yeah. week, it's essentially yeah. because if you don't do the whole pie thing at the mm -hmm. very beginning of the class, it exactly. adds that stuff to the beginning that you have to accomplish before you can get to the homework. Okay. okay. I established so that adds, as well. So, yeah. All right. So we'll we'll uh, we'll chit chat after the the hour and change, so I can let everybody else go. Do you feel confident? <laughs> no pun intended. Do you feel confident enough with this type of example that we've done? Do you want to do another, or do you want to move on to the second one? Miss Marie, I um I like doing this because I found out how to do it, and and I got all my numbers and everything. So I feel I feel kind of good. So once I can get on to doing my homework, I'll be doing it right. <laughs> no taken. No taken. <laughs> All right. Do, is it okay if we move to the next example? Yes. Gonna I, feel I okay? So. Yeah. Okay. Can I, I get thumbs up across the board? If, if, and if you don't, yep. is there a boo one? I don't know. All right. This is number two. Yeah, I think we're good. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and then share my screen. We're going to do proportions next. Now, those of you with the calculator are in probably in better shape or just as good shape, but I got news for you. Alex does the same thing. It'll be just as helpful. Watch. Trust me, I'm a doctor. All right, hang on, here you go. Okie dokie, here we go. Um, we're gonna do the second type. I promise you it's not difficult. God willing, you'll catch on right away. So in this one, you notice it says confidence interval for a population proportion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, I didn't write the question. Okay. All right. So here's what I want you to take away. 
And I need you to really read this question. I'll try and make it a little bigger. Give me one second. Let me make this screen larger. Okay. When you read this, the first thing I want you to notice is they're going to give you P hat right off, right off the bat. P hat is known as X over N. Okay. So if you notice in this case, they're telling you X is 73. Mm -hmm. N is 150. 150. So that means that there's, if there's a P hat, there's a Q hat somewhere. So basically if P hat is 73 over 150, that means that 150 minus 73, which is what? I got, I got 0. 0.48, six. Okay. It's 77. 77. 77? Okay, yeah. so 77 over 150. I got it wrong. Q, no, I didn't say that. Is Q hat. What I'm getting at is a different concept. Watch, watch what I mean. Okay. Take a picture of this question on your phone if you could, or write it down. Your your choice. If the confidence interval is ninety percent, what is that critical Z? Do you remember? One point what? One point six four five. Bingo. 1.645, that is never going to change. I don't care what the question is. Now, what the only precaution that I beg you to take when you read the question is pay attention to the last lines where they may switch off and, and try to trick you. So the P hat in this question is, is focusing on people that favored a new proposition. Mm -hmm. So that means that Q hat are people that did not favor that new prop proposition. That would be 77 over 150, right? Look, note, this is where I want you to pay attention because the question sometimes that they tend to flip it around on you and you think you're answering it correctly, but you're not. But this one is straightforward. So it says, based on this poll, compute a 90% confidence interval for the proportion of all U.S. adults in favor of the proposition. So we're fine, we're, we're golden. Ready, I'm gonna switch pages, so here we go. Do you remember? I said the formula is P hat mm -hmm. plus or minus that critical Z. P hat. Times the square root of P hat, mm -hmm. Q hat as a product over n. Here's what we know. We know that p hat, which is equal to x over n, and I just wrote this really nice. Times. This is a little little p hat. And this is equal to 73 over 150. Q hat is its complement. What completes this? So q hat is 1 minus p hat. So in this case, 1 minus 73 over 150, 150. which 150. is basically 77 over 150. And Q hat equals. The other thing we need to know is they Q want 90% confidence interval. If that's the case, my critical Z is 1.6. Okay. 77 over. 150 and it's 90%. Which is confidence interval, mm -hmm. which means that Z is 1.6 equals 1.645. Okay, so that means that our formula reads accordingly. This is 73 over 150 plus or minus the 1.645 times the square root of 73 over 150 times 77 over 150 over 150. It's a little repetitious, isn't it? So use your Alex calculator. For those of you that don't ha have the TI-8384 calculator, those of you that do have the TI-8384 calculator, get ready. Okay. <coughs> Write that down, take a picture, do what you need. I'll give you a minute. 73 divided into 
1.50 enter plus 1.645 okay those of you with the PI 8384 get ready to be wowed times are you ready you're going to go to start square root you're going to go over the test you're going to go down this time and look at the look at the different tests. So you go Z interval, T interval. You're going to pass the two sample and there is your the the function you need, which is basically the one prop Z interval. So hit enter. Oh, there's X over N. So that's basically 73. Over okay. 50. And uh, we want 90%. So I got to change this to a zero. So 90%. That's it. That's all you have to do. Go down to calculate, hit enter. And there's your answer. So I believe it was Ronnie who started dividing and got 0.41944.1954. And then the other, the upper confidence is 0.55379. All right, so now we need to look at our question and let's make sure we know what our, um, how many decimals they want, okay? Who has Alex available that can share real quick? Anybody willing to? I can't because my homework doesn't let me use the uh, calculator for the slope of line stuff, so. <laughs> okay, are you able to follow along so you can at least come back to this? Yeah. Okay. Who has access to their to their calculator? I do, but I don't know how to get all the answers. Yeah, but you have the TI eighty three eighty four, so you're gonna use that one. Okay. Anybody have their Alex available? Their calculator that can share the screen? No, children don't want to play today. All right. I can I'm trying to get back into it. That's okay. I got my session. My session expired, so I'm All going right, back in. I'm making you co-host. Go ahead. So we go into stats. Well, hang on. Uh, I'm going to do the. Alex. I'm just asking the question. Go ahead. I'm gonna wait. Nicholas, were you going to share the Alex? Yes. Awesome. I made you co-host. Okay. How do I share my screen? I think it's towards the bottom. You should see a little green light shine it's up. It's green. It's down the bottom. I got it. Can you see it? I yeah. see your name. Oh, there, oh, there you go. go. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So, so you're going to go over here. Let's do a fraction. Let's do 73 over 150. Okay. Scooch over and then plus or minus. No, no, do you have that key? Uh-huh. And then your critical, which is 1.645. Awesome. And now it's times. I need you to hit time. Yeah. And then we're going to do the square root. Parentheses. And now we're going to do that fraction, 73 over 150. Uh-huh. Scooch over a little bit and then hit times. No, don't close it yet. Oops. Because if you close it, it's going to be a pain. Just right. do times. Uh-huh. And then do um, 77 divided by 150. Now we want to close it out after you scooch over. No, come back. Scooch over. And then now divide. Hit the divide key. You need to get over to the right hand. Yeah, yeah 150. So yeah. that's what that, that's what that looks like. Equals. Okay, and equals, and there's your answer. Point okay. four one nine five four point five five three seven nine. We we're gonna need to round these numbers. Right. Okay. Okay. So far, so good. Point four two. Point four, I don't know how many decimals they want. 
Three. I have to go back. So it's three. Test, yes. It's test three. That's so all. Point. I don't know what it was though. Okay, so let me go back, share my screen. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, so let me go back to the question. So they want two decimals. Okay, so two, two decimals. decimals. 0.42 and 0.55. Those are our answers for this. So the so the lower is 0.42 and the upper is 0.55. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> so Ronnie, you needed to see the calculator. Yeah, let me look at here. So you're gonna go, go, ahead. To, stat, go to stat. Wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. I'm on stat. With your arrow key, go to test. Okay, I'm there. Scroll down with the arrow key all the way down, and you'll see one prop Z interval. I got it. Hit hit, hit um hit enter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and all I do is put in the P hat, which is the 73 over 150. Okay, 73. Over 150. Okay, go down. Your 150. Uh-huh, and your confidence level, 0. 0.90. 0. 0.90. Correct. And then go down to calculate and hit enter. Yep, 0.41954. And point five five three seven nine. Yep. And N is one fifty. And they want. And the other one is uh, point four eight six. Which we don't really care. We just want the confidence interval. They want two decimals, so point four two, comma point five five. Yep. And remember, the margin of error is nothing more than the difference between the p hat and the lower, and the difference between the p hat and the upper. So subtract okay. either one. I would always, I tend to always subtract the upper and the p hat because 0.55379 is bigger than 0.486 repeating. So when I okay. subtract that, I get the margin of error, and now I can just subtract that from the p hat to get the 41954. Okay. They're all related cousins. Okay. So how did you feel about that? that I felt good. Cause, cause you walked me through it. <laughs> okay, but I need you to need you to be able to be self sufficient and do this on your own. When well, I, I wrote it down and I took a picture of it. All right, I'm trying so to get I another. To let's try another question. Doing my homework. Where is she? Where is she? Why can't so I? So this not is the conference. <sighs> confidence in the room. There you go. Here's another question. Let's try this one together. So what's your P hat? What's your confidence level? What's your Q hat? What's your formula, etc. Is the P hat 287? Over 350, correct? Yes. And what's Q hat? Oh. Uh. Do you take the 350 and minus the 287 or? That's correct. It's 63. Thank you. 63 over 350. That's your Q hat. Oh, okay then. All right. And so you minus. What confidence level? 1.654. 1.645. yeah. <laughs> that will make a difference in your calculation. Yeah. All right. So let's throw this into the formula. What does that formula look like if we write it out by hand? So again, let me just draw a line here. We'll do it in red. So this would be okay. P hat. So you start with 287 over 350 plus or minus the critical value of 1.645 that times the square root of 287 
over 350 times um, the 63 over to, uh, 350. Apparently, I start being able to write. And all of that over 350. And that will give you the answer you're looking for. All right, and so throw that into your calculators. Tell me what you get. I got 0. 0.78 and 0. 0.85. 0. 0.78 and 0. 0.85. I assume you already rounded that? Oh, yeah, that's, I think that's the. I don't know if that's the real answer. I just hope it is. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Uh, so it's 287 over 350. 90% confidence. So yes, point set, actually I got 0.79 if you round it. So I got 0.7862. Right, 0 0.79 and 0 0.85. Yeah, so 0 0.79 and 0 0.85 is correct. Because they want two decimals again, is that what it is? I believe so. They wanted to. Uh... This is what you should have what? in your final answer. That's your confidence level. I, I missed the X and the N. I, I, I think I, for some reason, I wrote the wrong numbers down. I'm right. sorry. Yeah. Can we go back? To look yeah. At that? There you go. Okay. You can read the question. Is the N always going to be higher than the X? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's Mine is wrong. This is real wrong. Yeah. Mm -mm. Are you finding this to be manageable for you? It definitely helps to have the calculator that I do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the calculator helps. And, and, yeah, Alex. And what were the answers, ma'am? 0.79 and uh, 0.85. Okay. Yeah. I'll do it on the screen if you want. Um, so I'm going to go to stat. I'm going to go to over to test. I'm going to scroll down to uh, one prop Z int. This is 287. This will. Oh, wait a minute. On one prop Z. I was at the wrong place. One property yeah. interval. Remember that. 90% mm -hmm. confidence. Calculate. There you go. That's why we round this to 0.79 because that's a six after the eight. Okay. Are we? Are you, how many of you are using the TI-8384? I know Ronnie is. I know Ryan is. Who else is using yeah. it? Nick, are you using it? I am as well. Who is? Yeah, I, uh, Michelle. Michelle, okay. Yes. So I, you have, I have my own TI eighty four at home that I use. All right, good. Good. So then this this is obviously recorded, so you can. All right. I'm gonna have. I'm I'm gonna go back and because I want to make sure I get it right with the um calculator. Now, what I do want to discuss with you real quick is the interpretation of this because it's really fine and dandy that you're computing this using a sample given the information uh, shown to you. But what does it mean to you to have a confidence interval like a, for a proportion in this case? So as an example, if you notice this is your lower confidence, this is your upper confidence. Mm -hmm. So this is really in our, in our interpretation, this is really 79% and 85%. 85%. Because it's a proportion. So we say, in, our, in this example, we are 90% confident or sure that the percentage or the proportion mm -hmm. of seniors who, will, who believe they will have the fever, string fever, I before E except after C, right? D L I I E V E, yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who believe um, they have spring fever
is between 79 and 85. Yeah. And uh, just for the record in politics, this is how they determine, you know, like when we do polls to determine the voter uh, proportions or patterns, this is literally what they're using, this formula, this FYI. So they can tell based on the samples that they're taking what, what the general uh, gist of the voter trend is. So whenever you hear this in the news, now you know where it comes from. It's not a made up. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing that I would encourage you to do for your own gratification is you saw how I played in the initial example with the standard deviation. Um, with polls, you can change uh, the sample size from like 350, reduce it to 100 in one case, and in the other case, increase it to 1,000. And mm -hmm. then this would, be, this would affect this, this, and this as well. And look at the intervals and what happens, how they shrink, how they grow bigger. Here's the, the analogy. The more information I have, the closer I should be getting to the truth. The closer I'm getting to the truth, the less error I have. Does that okay. Sense? Yeah. So, so when you mean, mean you have... the more information you have, that's the sample size. Correct. So the larger your sample size, now remember, if you're increasing that to 100, or decreasing that to 100, you have to decrease the numerator as well. So what I'm getting at is, is that when you look at your sample size, the bigger that proportion is, the smaller your room for mistakes. Because that it's mean, shrink. huh? If you're larger, if you have a larger sample size as opposed to 79 and 85, would those numbers be closer together? A smaller. That's what I'm getting. As at. opposed to six percent, it'd be less. Okay. Correct, because you have more information. The more information you're gathering, then the more accurate your analysis should be. Um, if you think about it, go around your neighborhood, please don't do that, but think about yourself going around your neighborhood and asking just maybe 10 people who they're gonna vote for. Chances are birds of, birds of a feather tend to flock together. So mm -hmm. chances are people in your area are gonna have similar viewpoints. So you're going to have a very flawed um, sample. But if you increase that sample to be diverse and randomly selected throughout um, the area, then the closer you're going to get to the truth because the diversity of answers is going to mesh. So the bigger your sample size, the smaller that margin of error is going to be, or be, okay. be generally speaking. I have a question for, yeah. for Alex. Uh, mm -hmm. It says the knowledge check one is due tonight. Um, I don't know if that, I mean, we, it looks like we have to do it. Is that going to be newer information or just like the same information? If it's what, a knowledge what, check, it should be a review of what you've done. OK. And uh, unless it's testing or assessing you to create more of your pie, that could be our, no, our knowledge checks going to be do they count towards your overall grade on the uh, Alex not really. home? Not really, as long as you keep going. What if you don't do it? <laughs> it doesn't, it, you can't, you can't. It's, it's, it's not, it's not hard. hard. Next level. <laughs> huh? okay. That's the next level. Yeah, we'll, it won't we'll let you. No, my, no. Set, my knowledge, my knowledge check says it's due Sunday, eleven fifty nine p.m. Yep. Yeah, it's not too. that hard, uh, Nicholas. I did mine today. Yeah, but Nicholas, got, if you don't do it, it doesn't let you pass to the next. Doesn't level. let you progress. Right. Yeah, I got six out of six out of ten, and I think that's real good for me. Right. Mm -hmm. I think I just says nine thirty. That's today, isn't it? So yeah, I think it was yeah. all locked today. I don't Already know why you say that. Checks, so I I just don't know why there's another one. Is it because you want to make more of the pie like bigger? Like 
I'm I'm not I'm not the one controlling that. Alex is controlling that. But I, what I can control is I can push back the due date. Okay. Mine says Sunday. Is that what you're asking me to yeah. do? Mine says yeah. Sunday too. Yeah, For some sorry. reason I, I had two. And okay, I sorry. finished. Um, I'm sorry. Time. I was just trying to say I had two as well, Nicholas, and that one was due today. Right. I finished that yesterday, and then I just went in again. And that's when I couldn't hear her. So I had to close out, but there was another one. So I assume whatever you have now is probably the previous one. Maybe. Okay. I, I took the initial one and then it just says I have another one and it's, Correct. but it says knowledge check one. So, and it says one of one remaining. So I feel like I already took that, but I don't know. Yeah, me too, yeah. but I don't know why it's showing up like that either. Yeah. Okay, so it's an Alex thing. It's built in by Alex to check your progress based on your performance. Mm -hmm. And it does vary, I think, from student to student based on content. Because uh, every, everybody scored differently on their pie. So. All right, I'm, I'm, due, I'm done at 7.30. So unless you have uh, questions, I would encourage you to stay. Because I'm going to keep going and I have to talk to a few of you. Um, so I, I, in other words, are you good with proportions or do you want to yes, do another? You're, good doing proportion. You're good. Up. Um, professor, sure. I'm going to email you, um, regards to my Excel because the scene that it was missing, but I emailed it to you. Like I submitted the assignment, but I'll email you. I'll email it to you. What I need to talk to you about. Um, you, you can hang for a minute. I'll talk to you right after class. Okay, no problem. Yeah. All right, is, is if you're good, if you need another example on proportions, we can do another examples up to you. Are we all good? I'm okay. I'm good. good. I'm good. good. Kathleen's I good, Cooper's you good, Ryan, you're about. good. Ryan, no. you're good. Don, you're gonna wait for me. You're yes, good though, I'm right? I'm awake. I would like to talk to you though. Yes. That's fine, hang tight. And Valerie, are you good? Yeah, the only thing I need to do, I guess I have to do the, for the class five is I have to do the slope of the line assignments and Y-intercept and all that stuff that really isn't covered, but I guess I still have to do that. Yeah, once you get past that, then I'll take you to what we just did. Yeah, it's yeah. I did that. It's I have to do it to gallery. I don't know why. Okay, so I will okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's foundation knowledge. I mean, I'm happy to happily help you guys if you need help with that. So um, let me know. No, I um, just wasn't expecting that to come up the past two weeks. I wasn't expecting to see why intercept slip of the line and all that stuff. So it was just kind of. Yeah, if, you, if it's something you're familiar with, knock it out real quick and be done. You okay. be good. All right. Very good. Um, so if you're good with the examples I've done, I'm going to stop the recording. Last call, stopping the recording.